Welcome to Sharing the Middle, where we share stories about the messy middles of life. I'm Lacey, and I'm going to continue to share and hope that you see yourself in some of these stories. So today's episode is a continuation from my previous episode that was a conversation with my cousin Al. In this, we really dive deeper into how our family stories have impacted our individual identities. I really appreciate Al's willingness to share her experience so candidly, and I hope she gets to write that book one day. I think that there's some really cool universal themes in here about feeling like the outsider, wanting to be accepted, and just loving yourself. Take a listen. Here's my conversation with Al about family threads that shape our stories. I feel like you and I are we're in very similar places of I'm a lot younger than everybody else as far as like where I'm at in life. I am not having kids right now. I am not doing that for a long time. I did I did try. I settled down for a little bit, but now I'm back to living for myself and I'm got to figure that back out again. Tell me, I want to ask more about that. You settled down. We can talk about I just am trying to think about, I'm more curious about your thought process and of like, you. it sounds to me like I compromised for a little while. It didn't work out. So now I'm going my own route, which I think's awesome. And which <laughs> I do, I am curious that you would feel pressure to do things a certain way because our family also is very traditional in a lot of ways of like you grow up you get married you have kids you do this this and this like i one of our aunts i had i'd been at uc for like 10 years but i had switched jobs at uc and she was like you always have a new job like but i've been at the same place forever. what are you talking about and then i just had this moment of like it's different experiences It's fine. (laughs) Different experiences. And so I am curious. And I think it maybe also goes back to this idea of I feel like Nat could have been a really good, I don't want to say buffer, but another soul in that of doing things in your own way. And does any of that make sense? Yes. No, I definitely marched to the beat of my own drum, just like she did. And she gives me the confidence to do that on the days that I don't need it. But yes, I, so for me, as far as settling down, eventually that sounds great one day. I, everything that happened with my endometrial hyperplasia and is still happening, put a perspective on children for me. And I've had to have a lot of really hard conversations within myself, with my therapist, with my partner who I've been with for almost two years. So that's put a perspective. And I also love the idea of just being the really cool aunt and having that Carrie Bradshaw and big sex in the city life because I love the city. I am not a suburbs girl. I'm not a country gal. Like that's not me. And so that is something that I would love to do. I'd also love to open a dog rescue. Those are my goals. In life, the the traditional marriage and having kids and being a mom, I definitely am one that's going to say that's not my life. And I know to the older generation, it's like, well, that's how we do things. And I know that I am sure I've taught a lot of our aunts and uncles lessons and they've had to realize that's not how I do things. And they love me for it, my shaved head and my tattoos. But I think that I am a good lesson for all of them as well. Yeah. Because I am always keeping them on their toes. It's so bizarre for me to hear because I have the same thought. And I have followed the that path. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I did take longer to get married. I did took longer to have kids and that kind of stuff. Which, let me just say, in the world, I was still very young like a lot of people you were (laughs) you right Uh, so just i just need that little you know when i say traditional really traditional and so i just i guess for me it's i want to make sure you know that i hear that in the back of my head too and i've done all the right things quote unquote so you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't you just got to do what you want (laughs) that's how i think of it we only have one life and you're the only person living it, and that's just, that's my motto. Yeah. I I had the thought last night as Isaac was screaming at me of, I should have just been the cool aunt. So I fully support you. 
I love my children. And I think I, it's very clear. Anybody who's ever listened to this podcast or knows me, I love my children. But as soon as right. someone says they're child free by choice, I'm like, get it. I understand. <laughs> yes. I'm nanny. So yeah. it's, I'm that six. I actually, I'm a nanny right now to a two year old and a seventh month old. And I've been with him since he's two weeks. So I'm getting that fix that is, I need it. It's there. But on my weekends, I enjoy it. Yeah. Very much not having a ch- child. Having someone in the yellow other room yelling, wipe my butt. <laughs> right. Giving a snack. I want fruit snacks. I want fruit snacks. These fruit snacks. I, <laughs> one of my reasons why I didn't have kids until I did is because at family parties, the kids get to eat first. And I'm like, no, I don't want to feed my kids first. I want to feed me first. And making multiple plates, yeah. that's... I don't know if you've one. noticed, I go with the kids. I make multiple plates, but I'm making myself a plate. I'm part of this. This is my stand. Yes. 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 Exactly. Dang on it. I will. I would. I am curious, and we could talk about this if you want. You are legally changing your name, though. I'll- yes. I am, since that kind of fits in this conversation, do you have, is it just that's who you feel like you are? It's what people call you? I don't know. I'm just curious about that. I, it's, it's, I have gone by Allie my entire life. That name to me, I have, when you going to say who, because there's more than one, but when you have a name screamed at you your whole life, it's very, it's just very triggering and it's very direct, especially on things where I didn't really even deserve to get yelled at. I got the brunt of somebody's bad day. Yeah. And so for me, just Allie is very negative. It has a lot of bad memories and it it just reminds me of somebody that I'm just not anymore. But yes, so I am changing my name. I feel like Al. I will. I don't mind to share this. I went through a divorce in 2020. I also went through a mental stay at a hospital for a suicide attempt. And just like everything before 2020, I don't want to forget about it. And it was lessons, but I never truly felt like myself. I also didn't love myself ever until after that. So just after loving myself and falling in love with myself and who I am and just everything that I am now, Allie, that's it's just not Allie. It's Al and Al is strong and Al loves life and Al's just the best. I'm just really cool. I'm just going to say You are really cool. I completely agree. 100%. Wow, that was so cocky to say. I just, as Allie, I never would have said that. Like, I hated myself forever like as long as I can remember even a kid I'm proud to say that I really love myself because I know there's a lot of people that don't even grown adults that don't I know some very close grown adults to me that I fear will never love themselves and so I take pride in that because I just want everyone to be happy I know that's so unrealistic especially in today's world but that is just truly my motto I just want everyone to be happy and especially after everything that all the death you know even that's just like such like a tiny portion of at least for my life most people after that I know a lot of people when they have all the death they just it overcomes them and it becomes them and I think even me and you know some people that has affected and I just that's just not who I am I do still think I want to have Allison in there just because I think that is really cool. She was so cool. She was the cool aunt. She moved to California. She went She was the hippie of the family, too. She was like the free spirit, which I have never felt like a free spirit. So it just makes me feel like I could be a little bit closer to being a free spirit. You should. It's (laughs) fun. All right. Out of my siblings, my mom calls me her little hippie child and my dad calls me (laughs) his flower because I'm like a little flower and I just and that is that is me and my dad tells me a lot that at times that I remind her uh remind him of her in like that aspect well I do I had a thought earlier and I didn't ask you about this and if you don't want to talk to it, it's fine but okay. I will say you were the first and only person in our family to ever come out right yes 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 <laughs> Yes, and so that I know. I just wanted to say you're awesome because you did you. I hate saying that it's brave because you are just who you are, and I, I. But being who you are and being it who you are out loud 
in a very traditional family and that kind of stuff is very hard. So I just I want yes. you to know that's seen and recognized and cool. Thanks. <laughs> Natalie's actually the first person I came out oh, to. Yeah. Yeah, we were at Aunt Laney's for something, and we went on a walk to that park, park that is right yep. there. And we were just walking in that trail, and I just told her. And it's we have a thing call. It's from, we say, you dig. I don't know if you've ever seen me say yeah. that. I was talking to I was talking to a girl, and Natalie, I was, like, talking to Natalie about it. I doubt she really wanted anything to do with it. <laughs> I was talking to her and we were just like doing, I was in the eighth grade. So pick up lines and stuff. And one of them, she said like, you dig. And anyways, Natalie read in. She was like, no, I don't have a shovel. We kind of have always been like, I love you. You dig. That's where we would end our text messages. But yes, yeah, so she's who I came out to first. And I will say our family was actually very welcoming. And your Ludwig aunts helped me a lot, too, and gave me courage. And I love, I don't see them out a lot, but anytime I do, I always just say hi. And I knew for sure I was, because I was a little nervous, but I knew for sure that my Uncle Bob's family was going to be okay with it. And I love all of our family and now all of our aunts and uncles. They were okay with it. But I knew just in case I would have you guys. And I knew I, you know... And I had Nat. Yeah. But come to find out, every I was very lucky in that sense. I With my parents, it wasn't so much. That took a little bit. I was also very young, though. I knew very young. I knew when I was in kindergarten. That's just something wasn't there. And so I was outed in the sixth grade, the summer going into the sixth grade. And my parents, of course, were like, no, it's a phase. And... Then my mom went and she met a bunch of ladies and at rehab. I will say that because she is proud of that. My mom went to rehab and she is proud of that. And that helped her tremendously understand me and everything. And now she's like, it's it's Pride Month. And she's just like so cute about it. Or she was like, I was watching this show and she was trying to describe it. And I was like, RuPaul's Drag Race and she was like yeah I was watching that and I was like man why are you watching RuPaul's Drag Race it's delightful it's joy and it just it made me laugh and my dad's always been he's been cool with it too I remember crying one day and because I was watching a Grey's Anatomy episode of when Arizona's talking to Kelly's dad and my dad walked in and I was crying and he was like why are you crying and I was like who's gonna walk me down the aisle at my wedding if I marry a female And he's like, well, I am. And so like that moment will always be really special to me. And to tie that together, our first dance song was Tiny Dancer by Elton John. And the reason for that is because him and Kitty always listen to that. So my dad shared that with me. But anyways, everyone's been great. My family's been loving. Go gay people. I know not everyone has that experience, but I feel very lucky and blessed that I did and all of you were at my wedding and it was just it was really cool this is an interesting companion to the Barbie episode that we did that I did with my cousin Lydia and my my sister Becky because that was a big eye-opener for me and talking about oh me how Ludwigs are similar in that we don't talk about anything I did not know that my aunts were gay until very late (laughs) Because we just never talked about it, and it took me a long time to. And it, but it was just because it wasn't a thing. I never thought differently mm-hmm. of anything or anyone. And so when it got the label, it was like, I guess that is what's happening there, isn't it? Okay. But I very much have taken for granted what that means in just the level of acceptance. In that, why wouldn't we? Like that, it never occurred to me. That wouldn't be something to accept. And it's because I've seen, I have, and I, it also made it a lot easier for me to be whatever version of femininity I want to be because I've seen a spectrum of that and whatever. Okay. And I just, it really wasn't until I had the conversation with them that I realized, like, oh, it has really impacted me way more than I ever thought. And so to hear you say that it impacted you is also just like, that makes me so happy. And I bet it would make them very happy to know that you saw them in a light of, oh, there is 
a place for that acceptance and love. So I just, yes. I'm going to tell them that if they don't know already. Yes, <laughs> please do. Please do. Yes. But I, because I don't, it was one year old's graduation parties, but that's, I just, and it was before I came out and I was like, I, I know it's going to be okay. Yeah. And I'm glad that I have these role models. I may not know them very well and still don't, but I know that if something was to happen, I could probably call them or write them and be like, hey, how can I deal with this? And because they were one of the very first few people that I had interactions with that were gay. And I think a lot of that, too, had to do with my upbringing and not being around a lot of and I don't mean that as a dig towards my parents. It just wasn't something. And also people weren't coming out back then. Yeah. They just, they weren't. Again, like um, I said, we didn't talk about it. it we've never but, had yeah. that conversation. It's not like they came out to me when I took, no. It, and I think right. that's where, when it comes to a lot of this anti-LGBTQ plus legislation about talking, where they're trying to ban books and talking about certain things in classrooms i'm like you're making it right you right you are making it weird i'm like i can tell you from experience you make it weird like you know and it's the same way of isaac's one of his really good friends and his last school had two dads and he was like yeah and And i'm like okay and so it's just it's i'm in such a place of privilege (laughs) to be able to say yeah it's only weird if you make it weird right no (laughs) it is it's that's it. That's a hard one. It's it hard. To, it's hard to talk about that because it's not I really don't. But I believe in my heart and soul that we are not out here shoving it down anybody's throat or pushing it onto anybody. I don't even introduce myself as hi, I'm Al. I'm a lesbian. I brought it up on here, even just in this conversation. Right, and right. I brought it up. No one else. did. Right. I mean, if right. anybody made it weird, it was me. Right. I no, know I didn't no. make it, but, but I'm using that as an example of right. a cis heteronormative lady in the conversation is the one who brought it up. But it is, it's hard. It's hard. Even I will say when I was getting married, we were refused at a venue in Kentucky because it was a same sex marriage. And I got married in 2019, not that long ago. So it's still still out there. The hypocrisy and the insanity of it. I just cannot. I can't understand. And I probably will never understand. Me either. I think everybody should just let everybody be happy. <laughs> Who's it hurting? I genuinely right. don't understand. Right. Sorry. I just, I could talk a lot about it. We could have a whole I episode. know. We really <laughs> could. And I can just talk about it. Now, do I? That is another thing that I would love. We don't talk about it. I would love to be like, tell me more about. Because I can only imagine the stuff that they went through. And so there's just so much of it that. I wish we could talk through because I, and maybe this is my venue to make it happen. I don't know. Any of my family members, I would love to chat about anything hard. Maybe some things I don't want to hear about, but actually yeah. there's a lot of things I don't want to hear about. But I, I do, the more that I do this podcast and the more that I talk to people and that they're frank and honest about what they go through, the more that I realize that we are all very similar And that we internalize other people's shit so much. And that's the problem. Not what's within us. Not what somebody else's actual opinion of us. It's what we internalize from other people. And it genuinely hurts my heart that you did not love. I don't think anyone really loves themselves for a long time because I think it's very hard to do that. Because I can definitely understand like. I don't think I loved myself until probably two years into my relationship with Joe and then realized it's, I hate, I hate saying this out loud, but I will. It took me realizing I don't need a man's approval of me to like myself by being with a man approving of me. I know that sounds backwards anyway, but it wasn't until then that I was like, oh, none of that shit matters. None of it. No. Why? Why? You know. And I don't know. I just it hurts my heart to hear that you didn't love yourself when I know how loved you are by other people. Thank you. Which is, it's a very different thing. I get it. I just, I am the same way. But I just want everyone to be happy. I say that too. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I just want everyone That's to be right. happy. As long as you're not hurting somebody else, do your thing. Cool. 
I think for me, especially, I don't want to speak on you, but I've had a tough life. I've had a lot of life experiences that we don't have to go into, but I've, I've, I've had a, a tough and rough life. And I think a lot of that has to do with it because I would not want anybody to go through the things that I have gone through and seen and witnessed because it's a lot. Not even just all the death that we've talked about. So I think that's why, that's personally why I think the way that I do, because I just want everyone to be happy because no one deserves to go through the pain that we go through. And I know it's inevitable. Pain is everywhere. Pain is what makes us stronger. At least for me, that's what I learned from. And I can't, you can't let it swallow you and take up your whole life. You can't become your pain. But that's why I think, and I know I seem very positive and I am. I'm also in a lot of therapy. I have a therapy appointment after this and I will probably lose it. And that's like my once a week time to just cry and get through like what I've gone through. And I would suggest that forever. Oh, I, I um, am a big therapy proponent. I am also in therapy. Yes. For a long time, I did cognitive behavioral therapy, which was good about fixing surface level things. But recently I've gotten into like actually looking at different trauma in my life and I realize how that affects so many different things and it's weird how and I'm not ready to talk about those things and that's not something I'm cool with sharing with the world maybe someday but it takes work and it takes being brave because even mm -hmm. I did therapy before and I wasn't brave and I didn't talk about those things so I just yeah I think a lot of times we attribute, and I very much say this to myself, of like bravery being this like certain thing that it is. And it's really a lot of things. And I don't know. I think that you're a brave person. Yeah. Thanks. I think you are too. Thanks. You're welcome. Can we just talk every day and just compliment each other? <laughs> it makes me feel great. One of the biggest gifts you could ever give me is telling a friend, coworker, loved one, family member, anybody that you know that you think would enjoy the podcast about it. We're a little operation and just you sharing with one person will make a huge difference for us. So if you have some time today, take a minute, share sharing the middle with someone in your life and hopefully they'll start sharing the middle with us. Loss and tragic oh. and tragedy in our family yeah. you no know? the minute you bring it up it's generational that we don't even know about and it probably explains how we get through things too they back then probably just got through it and just pushed it under the rug which i will say i don't like that we do that and that is my perspective and i that is not who i am if something is bothering me or if something happens I need to talk about it. Like, I need to talk about it to get through it. Yeah, I just feel like that is, like, the Bradley way to just push things under the rug. And if I will say if that makes me the bad guy for saying it and I get people upset, I'm sorry. But that's it just it's just what we do. Yeah, that's why when they it's so funny when I hear people talk about loud families who fight. I'm like, we have loud families who fight quiet. Quietly. <laughs> yes, we're loud in numbers, quiet in. <laughs> Yes, that is. Yes, that is a great way to. And, but yeah, I agree. And that's something I've been on a journey of. I have started being like, that was a weird thing to say or no, I don't think you're right. Like I've started to be that person, too. So you're not alone. Well, people always say that you and I look so much alike. So I feel like I was just about to say that. <laughs> it really was. And I agree. And I will take it because you said I, I agree with you on Thanksgiving. You're like, I just have a great face. And I agree. I you I have, have a, a beautiful face. face. And I've started to love mine, too. Yeah, you know? I it's what it's, I guess it's, I've always been a big girl. I like there's mm -hmm. never been a time in my life where I wasn't the biggest in a room, even when I. I, like I cannot remember, and so I have gotten really good at compartmental certain Great, things. things to love. Yes. yes, and I was like, I got a good face. I got a good face. Yep. I got good hair. I may be a really weird shape on my body, but I got these other things. Yes, that is, yes, same. I agree. But, I will say it was hard for me to find those things when I was a hundred pounds heavier, though. But yes, it is. We hard. do have great hair. We have great. 
great, great hair. And that Bradley hair stays. It does. Yes, I know. I'm excited. I thank you so much, Al. I just welcome. I agree. I and I told this when I told my parents that you were coming. I was like, I just want to get her perspective on things because I think you are really cool. And I <laughs> thanks. I think you were too. And I really appreciate your willingness to share, especially coming from a place where you know you don't do. Honestly, you can't even have good emotions if I'm honest. You just, you are level all the time. And that is the way to be. And as a person who has all the emotions all the time, and I'm sorry, let me back up. Certain people can have big emotions. Right. (laughs) Others cannot. But yeah, I just, I really appreciate you sharing and being candid. And I also think for people who don't know us personally, think in talking through this you get a much better sense of why we approach things the way that we do and that i don't know i'm gonna i'm now i'm really thinking about that that idea of the people that we talked about were so special to me because they made individual people feel seen and special and i want to make sure i'm doing that in life so same that's any, a good message any other me. things that you sorry that, that was my lesson learned today do you, <laughs> do you have any wrap-up thoughts that you would want to share no i just appreciate the opportunity for you letting me come on and share everything that i did we actually have an aunt that one time told me that i should write a book of my life story and it's opportunities like this where I get to discuss it. And I'm like, okay, well, there's other people out there too that think how I do. So, you know, maybe I should. And I just really appreciate it. And I've really enjoyed this talk. I, I, even though like we're not together in person, it has felt like we are. And I really, really enjoyed this time. Me too. Me too. Yes. You're, you're welcome. Thanks, Al. You're welcome. See ya. Thanks for sharing the middle with me. As always, I hope you've been able to see a little bit of yourself and the story we shared today. Don't forget to follow, share, rate, review, and follow me on social media at Lacey Shares. You can always check out the Joyful Support Movement at joyfulsupportmovement.com and see all of the amazing goodness we have there, like No Shame in the Home Game, Pops of Joy, courses, resources, and of course, the Joyful Support Village. All right. Now go out there and spread some joy.